Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. That was my cat deciding he's done. <laughs> and I'm coming to you from my house, as always, on a Monday to talk about something new today. And so this was a video I was thinking I would do last week, but then uh, life events took over and I decided to do a very heartfelt um, lessons from knitting and crocheting about lifelines. So this originally I was thinking about doing this last week in conjunction with a video on the sideshow where we talked about tension and how to hold tension in different hands. And all of this is a disclaimer of this is how I hold tension and I do it differently in um, this is a flip video. I might flip it back around, but in my right hand versus my left hand. I'll flip the video if I can. So the way I hold it in my left hand is a way I learned how to do it for crochet and it works really well for me with knitting. I only knit continental. That's usually what it's referred to when you hold tension. One of the styles when you hold tension in your left hand. Um, it works for me when I'm doing two color knitting. And then there is how to hold it in your right hand. I've come up with my own thing. Everyone's gonna come up with their own thing, but I'm gonna show you mine so you can try to replicate it if it works for you. I always tell people when I'm teaching them knitting or crocheting, you will figure out what works for you. This may or may not work for you, but essentially it's flipping it around the fingers in a way that you can also grab it and hold tension and figure out how to use it. So I've done my best to draw it. Hands are hard, let me tell you. If you're a patron over on patreon.com at one of the higher levels where it says, behind the scenes videos. I tried to do a behind the scenes of how I start to set up what I draw. And so you can start to see how the process goes. I'll try to publish that video sometime today. Let's, let's see what I can do about trying to impart to you in pictures and then by actually doing it, by watching my hands, how I hold tension and see if that will help you out in getting your gauge more consistent. Tension is one of the things you have control over to try to um, get consistent stitches. That and the size of your tools, your hooks or your needles. So let me show you what I do. Let's get to it. So as I said in the introduction, all of this is, is a personal thing how you are gonna end up holding tension is going to end up being a personal thing. And you might find you like it exactly the way I do it. You might find you're gonna come up with your own, your own style. So how I hold tension and emphasis on how I hold the tension with the right or left hand. Um, it's, it's totally personal. And I'm, I'm gonna go out there to say, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way. There's how I do it, it's how other people do it. Everything here can be flipped to the other hand. So I hold things a certain way in my right hand, but you can do it with your left hand the same way. Just kind of replicate the idea of what I'm doing, kind of mirror image. Mirror image it, right? Same thing with the left hand to the right hand, if you find it works for you. What I'm gonna do here, I think, is I'm going to color code the different steps. So the first thing I do this is for right hand, for what I would categorize as English style knitting, holding tension with your right hand. It's often the, the slang terms, they will say you are a thrower or a flicker. So step one is to come from behind the yarn or from under it is what I'm going to call it. And I'm saying the second finger, because this is in some places it's called your middle finger, pointer, middle, ring, or index, middle, ring, pinky. It's your second one down. One, two, three, four. So this finger is coming up from behind and catching the yarn. And that first step, let's do this as much in color order as we can. That first step, I'm going to make pink. 
Step two is you're going to wrap it around your middle finger. And my cat is deciding to have commentary. So that first part of the strand that you came up behind with the second or middle finger is right there. And wrapping it once around your finger, let's make that orange. Notice it's already drifting behind the first finger there. That's actually part of it. And there's two things, I only have three pictures here. There's two things that happen next. There's that your first finger catches under in the opposite direction. You came under this way, first finger pulls back the other way. And your bottom two fingers, something has to grip in here. If it's just wrapped around your middle finger, it's not gonna be enough. But for step three, Here, let me add up here. We ducked under, we wrapped around. Here, the first finger ducks under and fingers three and four clamp down on the other end of the yarn to keep it in place. So we have the beginning of the yarn here that we came at from behind. We have the wrap around the middle finger And we have the part of it that ducked, that the first finger ducked under. And if we want to put the other part of it is, we're grabbing onto it down there. From behind, wrap around the finger, duck your first finger under and grab to hold on. This will make a lot more sense with the real yarn, but there's really only about three steps going on in here. The version I use for left-handed, what's often called continental or traditional crochet. Continental is often called picking. You often, because the tension's held over here, you end up picking with your needle rather than flicking with your hand. There's a few different, <laughs> there's a lot more steps in this one. I'm gonna try with maybe a finer pen to be marking it all out. So I start with my hand palm up. to get oriented in the right direction. Next, the yarn comes up. Just to be clear, this is the ball end of the yarn over here also. The yarn comes up between, you place it between your pinky and your ring finger or four and three. Let's make that pink again. Next thing you're gonna do is you're going to wrap it. It's right here. You're gonna wrap it all the way around your pinky, your fourth finger, and return to what I call position A. It's exactly the same as it was over here, except it's been wrapped around outside ways around your pinky. That's the motion if we're gonna to try to draw it without completely muddying this all up. So here's the original part that came in. Step one was just bringing it up and under. Step two is wrapping it all the way around your finger once. Let's clarify. Step one is having your hand palm up. Step two is getting your yarn in the right position. Step three is wrapping it around. Step four, is bringing it over your third finger, your ring finger, and down. So let's color code this in. We have the original yarn that came up and wrapped around your pinky. And then you bring it over your next finger and down. And then the last step of this setup is to keep bringing it behind your first two fingers over to the left. And 
Then you can move your hand in whatever direction you want. Let's color code this and let's talk about how this functions just a bit before I show you with real yarn. So we have what came up between your fourth and third fingers. We have what wrapped around your fourth finger. We have what went over and down, over your third finger and down. And then it goes behind your first two fingers that way, to the left. Now there's two things about this that gives you a lot of control. One thing about holding it like this is if you keep your fingers together, you will have tension. It'll be tight, let me put it that way. If you separate your fingers, so like this, the yarn won't be able to get through. If you separate your fingers, you'll be able to pull the yarn through. The other thing about this is you have a choice of which finger, your first or your second, will pull for an extra like lever, for an extra pulley. Let's do it with real yarn so I can explain to you what I mean. All right, let's, so let's show you both the right hand and the left hand, and maybe even both together. So let me, well, for both of these, let me demonstrate with the lighter color yarn. So. For the right hand, for the English style, what I had said in the pictures was to come from underneath. I'm realizing when I put on the other pictures of what's going to the ball, I'm gonna to need to put a note on there saying, no, it's what's going to the work. Let me fix that. Because this is the work, the ball is down that end. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna come from behind. I could come with my whole hand, but I really wanna catch it on my middle finger. So I'm coming up from behind. I'm wrapping around my middle finger. And then I can scoop this guy back under. And then for extra closure, I can grab with all of my fingers, but definitely the ones down here. So I've got tension up here. That's really what we're going for is tension right here. And I can pull to keep that tension and I can let more yarn through, but I can clamp down. So again, if I come from behind the yarn, this is what's facing you. You're coming up from behind it. Wrap around your middle finger once and put push back, duck under with your first finger. And then as much as wants to grab here, but this is what's holding tension. These guys are kind of extra keeping it in place. So if I picked up and I went to go knit, I often get my needle set before I get tension. But then I can be knitting like this. And that is a little bit more for flicking than for real for full blown throwing. Under, wrap around under like this, grab and go. So how about, I'm gonna back these up because eventually I wanna grab one yarn in both hands. How about if I hold the yarn with my other hand? If I hold it over here. Now I do it without thinking. I do this, another flippy floppy thing. But when I teach people about it, Let's get this guy in, yeah. When I teach them about it, here's how I demonstrate to make the most sense. Again, so here we're going with the left hand. Palm up, put the yarn between your third and fourth fingers or your ring and pinky. Wrap all the way around your pinky, over, your ring finger and down and keep pulling back behind over to the left, your first two fingers. Then you can move this around any way you want. If you keep the finger shut, nothing's moving. And you can pull with this finger or you gotta keep it up on the tip or with this finger. But these fingers, since they're tight, the yarn's not going anywhere. 
But if I open up my fingers, I can pull all the yarn through I want and I clamp them down and nothing's moving. Open up, clamp down. Now at this point, if I try to go knit, there, <laughs> there's no tension at all. I have to let go and reset. So I'm gonna, again, palm up. Yarn comes between my fourth and third fingers, wraps around my fourth, over my third and down, keep pulling back until you can kind of flip it and have it ready to go. And then if I'm knitting continental over here, I can hold on to the needle with my middle finger and thumb and pull, or I can hold with my first finger and thumb and pull with my middle and get that going. Or I can pull this way and get this going. But again, I'll show you one more time. Palm up, start close to the work, wrap around my, well, I skipped talking you through a step. So palm up, yarn between my fourth and third finger, wrap around my fourth finger. So I'm kind of holding it the same way I was in step two, but now it's wrapped around. Over my third finger and down, pull behind my first and second, and then I'm ready to go. Now, if I have to hold two different yarns, one in each hand, I've already got this guy set up. I'm gonna come from behind, underneath, wrap around my middle finger, duck my first finger under in the opposite direction, and I'm ready to do a little two color. Stranded knitting. Clunky needles. Not the most elegant to show you, but I have set up my yarn. I have tension in both hands in slightly different ways. So there you go. We have our video on how I hold tension in my two different hands. And I hope you're able to get something out of that. I hope that that can help. If my specific way doesn't help you, there are so many other ways to hold it. Play around with it. See what works to, to give you tight tension and to let things through your fingers. A special thank you to the patrons who have joined and subscribed over on Patreon. We will put their names at the end. The upper level of patrons will get a little behind the scenes video as soon as I can finish it. We'll see how that goes. But consider subscribing to the channel, that's free. Consider becoming a patron. You get your name at the end, no matter what level you subscribe at. And if you have the resources to do something a little more, then we will share a little more with you. Thank you for making this possible. Let us know what you wanna see. There's already a few ideas piling up in the queue that I will get to as I can. And as always, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Did I forget to feed you because I was filming tips and tricks? Yeah. Oh. Urgh. Okay. Yeah, that's my he loves me because I'm going to feed him. <laughs> Pretty soon. That won't be as affectionate anymore. <laughs> Let's go.